Okay, I think we're live. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to the University of Manchester's sixth Making a Difference Awards for Social Responsibility. In these really quite unprecedented times, we're delighted to be bringing our university community together like this from our secret lockdown studios here in Manchester and to host this event to you live online. In case you don't know, I'm Julian Skirm and I have the real privilege of being the university's director of social responsibility. My role tonight is to be your host with the most and provide the flow to the show. I'd like to welcome all my colleagues, our students, our former students, and our many friends and partners of the university who are tuning in tonight. And of course, those people who've been shortlisted for an award. Tonight's about recognizing and celebrating the achievements of our people who are making a wide range of positive contributions to society and the environment, locally, nationally, and internationally. This year, we got over 180 entries, which is the highest number we've ever had. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of our judges who I know are watching keenly at home. Some of these judges are my colleagues, but actually the majority of them are important partners of the university. They come from outside and they help to hold a mirror up to the public each year for the relevance, quality, and impact of our work on social responsibility. Many of you I know have been sharing content on our Facebook, pa uh, Facebook Live page already, so please keep doing this and pass on your comments and support to the winners and highly commended entrants. Time permitting then, we're going to have a quick after show drink and Q&A right here from our lockdown studio with Lem Sasse. And we invite you to propose some questions to him in the comments sections on Facebook. And if Twitter is your favoured form of social media, why not tweet about the event throughout the evening using the hashtag MAD Awards. So let's get this started and introduce my co-host for the evening. I'm delighted to be joined tonight in our lockdown studio by the acclaimed poet, playwright, broadcaster, speaker, and of course our university chancellor, Lem Sisse. Well, hello everyone and welcome. It's, it's really great to be here with you for the Making a Difference Awards. Thanks for having me here. So Lem, let me ask you, this is the fourth time you've presided over these awards. You're a busy man, so why do you keep doing this? As people have heard many me say before, the Chancellor position is an elected one, and I, I stood for it because of my connection to Manchester, but also because of the real connection I feel to our social responsibility agenda. So I couldn't be more chuffed to be at these awards, really. It's the highlight of my year now, and I hope it shows everyone how important social responsibility is to me, as well as to the university. And Lem, what do you think about doing it online like this? Normally you and I were in the Whitworth Hall, it's a big event, uh, but we're all on Zoom, aren't we, in our lockdown studio? How does that feel? It's kind of, it's good to do something original, something that we've never done before and to, to, to um, yeah, and to, to, to do it as best as we can. You know, it seems a bit weird, yeah, but do, do doing a social responsibility event when we're asked to be socially distanced might feel a bit weird, but it's it's actually quite exciting. It's a new a new uh, production, you know, a new set of production values. Um, but when we're all locked down like this, I think we need to find a way to be socially connected rather than socially distant. So bringing our university community together like this from our secret lockdown studio is just great, to be honest. I wish I could see all of your faces in front of me now. But still, as a performer and as an artist, I love the adrenaline I've got right now. And I said that to you before, didn't I? You know, I love the fact that people are coming together and being socially connected in this medium. And Lem, um, don't forget then, if you can explain to everyone, we got this bit of fun as well tonight, yeah? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So just because this is online, we still like you to pay really close attention to what's going on. So inspired by PE with Joe... Uh, Julian and me uh, will be making five, in total, five subtle changes to our appearance uh, throughout this evening. Keep your eyes peeled. The first person to comment on each of these five changes on Facebook Live will get a signed copy of my memoir, My Name Is Why, um, which you can put straight onto eBay if you want. You'll get about 20p for it. So pay attention. Okay, thanks, Slem. Now, before we start the awards, we're really pleased to have two other people here live for you to say a few words. The first person is the one, of course, whose personal vision back in 2010 and 2011 led to us having social responsibility as a core goal of the university. That, of course, is our own president and vice chancellor, Professor Dame Nancy Rothwell. 
We're really thankful you're able to tune in live like this to us tonight, Nancy. So over to you, please, for your welcome speech. And if you can just put your screen up a bit so we can see you a bit, and Nancy, we'll really look forward to hearing your speech. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Julian. I wouldn't miss this for the world. And welcome everyone to our 2020 Making a Difference Awards for Social Responsibility, the sixth year, as you've heard. And certainly the most different as the first time we've done this online. Mm -hmm. All fingers crossed. Um, as Julian said, we were determined not to let the current and challenging circumstances interfere with this key event in our university calendar. So the first thing I wanted to say is that whether you're a member of staff, a current, future or former student, a member of our board or General Assembly or an external partner, you're all very welcome indeed. And a really special welcome goes to any of you who are tuning from overseas and uh, really sorry if this is a very different time for you. I'm also very grateful to the chair of our Board of Governors, Edward Astle, who will say a few words later, and of course, our Chancellor, Lem Sisse, who's joining us from London and is a significant champion for our social responsibility agenda. These are, of course, challenging times and unprecedented arrangements for all of us, staff, students, and our many partners. But we're all working very hard to make sure that everyone in our university community is safe and well. I'm very proud of the way our university community is rallying together in these difficult circumstances and indeed doing so much to help others that need our support. What the current pandemic shows us is that our university plays an absolutely critical role, not just for our staff and students, but also for society, locally, nationally and internationally. In January, we launched the university's new vision and strategic plan, Our Future. And after consulting over 4,000 staff, students, alumni and others, we committed to keeping social responsibility of one of our core three goals. Indeed, it was the one that featured most strongly. And this is part of our broader vision of benefit to society and the environment in all that we do. We're still the UK's only university to have social responsibility as a core goal. And our success in this agenda was just recently recognised in the THE impact rankings, where we appeared top in the UK for the second year in a row for our achievements against the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. We also developed and restated our values of knowledge, wisdom, humanity, academic freedom, courage, and a pioneering spirit that fits so much with our city of Manchester. The examples of social responsibility activity you'll see tonight will truly embody these values. I know you will be amazed by some of the submissions. So it just leaves me to say a huge thank you to everyone who entered for these awards. You are all brilliant. Thank you if you nominated someone or if you spent time judging them. The recognition people get tonight is much more than a personal badge of honor. It really acts as a stimulus for others to emulate and learn from them. As you'll see later th this evening, our commitment to social responsibility has been guiding our response to the current coronavirus pandemic. There are many uncertainties and challenges before we get back to a new normal. But I'm confident that the commitment we have to social responsibility and civic engagement will only be strengthened as our staff, students, alumni and external partners work together to address shared social, health and environmental challenges. So good luck, everyone. I wish everyone an enjoyable evening and an inspiring one. I'm now going to pass back to Julian, and I'll look forward to tuning in with the rest of you on Facebook Live. Have fun. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nancy. Really pleased you can join us, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the evening from your home in Manchester. So a lot of people will know that Nancy broke through a huge glass ceiling herself by becoming our first female vice chancellor in nearly two centuries of our existence. Um, our next presenter, Professor Nalin Thacker, also broke ground for our university when he became the first black, Asian or minority ethnic member of our university's senior leadership team last year. He was appointed as our vice president for social responsibility last year. Nalin's joining us all the way from Didsbury in South Manchester, and he'd like to say a few words of welcome as well for us. So over to Nalin, please. Thank you, Julian and Lem, and thank you, Nancy, for your welcome. Good evening, everyone. I'm really pleased to be part of tonight's annual celebration of social responsibility. 
as many of you know, I only started as Vice President for Social Responsibility last September. It is only appropriate that I start by thanking my predecessor, James Thompson, who together with Julian and his team have done remarkable work in this area and who deserve enormous credit and gratitude for the university's national and international standing in social responsibility. When I took on my post, I hadn't anticipated to be presenting at these awards from my home in Didsbury, but here we are. For me tonight is a really valuable opportunity to bring together our universe, a whole university community in these unprecedented times. I'm delighted to see so many students, staff, alumni, and friends of the university tuning in on Facebook Live. Warmest welcome to you all, and I hope you all have a wonderful evening, one that will lift your spirits in these challenging times. In the past 12 months, we have reaffirmed our commitment to social responsibility as one of our three core goals in our new vision and strategic plan, our future. And we have delivered a range of successes across our four main priorities in social responsibility, namely environmental sustainability, social inclusion, better health and cultural engagement. First on environmental sustainability, we've committed to become a zero carbon campus by 2038 at the latest, in line with the targets set for the city of Manchester. We've also committed to eliminate all avoidable single use plastics from our campus by 2022. And we've begun the world's biggest study into effects of indoor air pollution in greater Manchester schools. And finally, we've made a commitment to decarbonize our entire investment portfolio, starting with almost complete disinvestment in fossil fuel companies and 30% reduction in the overall carbon intensity of our equity portfolio by 2022. On social inclusion, we've seen hundreds of our local Manchester Access Programme students enter critical occupations such as medicine, law, nursing, teaching and engineering. We become the first university in the UK to place 1,000 governors into schools, drawing on the considerable engagement of our alumni. We supported the relocation of the Manchester Growth Companies, the Works Partnership, into our neighbouring Ardwick community and worked with construction partners such as Balfour Beatty, Langer Rock, Wilmot Dixon to deliver hundreds of high-quality jobs and apprenticeships for local people. We've supported the launch of a new and independent community interest company called University Ardwick Partnership, which is supporting initiatives of shared value between the university and our most local community. We've expanded our Greater Science Share for Schools initiative across all corners of the world, and we've become the first university to commit to the social value portal so that we can measure and track our ambition to create more impact through our supply chain. Thirdly, on better health, we've developed our work on service learning in dentistry, pharmacy and medicine, undertaken world-leading work on addressing cancer, and of course, we are playing a critical role right now in our nation and region's response to COVID-19 through our research rapid response groups, releasing clinical academics, student nurses and medics to the front line, and supporting the sharing and production of vital PPE. Finally, on cultural engagement, we've begun new capital work on our museum for the South Asian Gallery and become the first UK institution to return ceremonial items to Australian Aboriginal groups. Together with Esme Ward and her team at Manchester Museum, I had the pleasure and privilege to be involved in the end of the ceremony both at the museum and the Australian High Commission in London. I knew this was important, but I hadn't truly appreciated how important this was until I experienced firsthand how much this meant to the Aboriginal people. Also in the last year, we celebrated becoming a UNESCO World Heritage Site at George Royal Bank and won accolades for our pioneering Blue Dot Festival. Amongst other notable things with our cultural institutions, we've developed a successful natural and cultural health service at the Whitworth using the park as our inspiration 
and partnered with local residents to excavate and document Moss Side's famous Reno nightclub. We developed a state-of-art digital collections initiative to allow the public to explore high-quality images of our amazing manuscripts held at the John Ryan's Library, and we've celebrated 21 years of existence of our Ahmed Iqbal Ullah Race Relations Resource Center. We are very proud of these achievements. These are clearly very worthy and important activities, but also they are of the very highest standards. We know this because for the second year in a row, we've been ranked by the Times Higher Education as the top institution in the UK for performance against UN Sustainable Development Goals. This covers all our major work to enhance the well-being of society and our environment. I want to thank the many academic, professional and cultural institution staff, students and alumni across all parts of our university community who've supported our fantastic performance in this ranking. So back to tonight. I can't wait to hear the stories of our impact across so many areas of university tonight. Whether you're up for an award or watching as an interested party, you are all in for an enjoyable evening. I will now pass back to Julian and look forward to tuning in with the rest of you on Facebook Live. Good evening. Thank you, Nalin. That's great. So now we've got those formalities out of the way, let me explain how tonight's going to work. We're going to be making awards in eight different categories and we'll be updating you on where we're at in the proceedings throughout the night on Facebook Live. We'll be recognising achievements in a wide range of areas, as you'll see. I'll be revealing the highly commended awards. Then we'll be passing over to Lem, who will be announcing the overall winners in each category. Um, and people will get a, a social responsibility trophy. I'll show you one in a moment. We'll then see a short film, if you're a winner, that shares the impact of your work. And after this, Lem will magically beam from our lockdown studios into the winners' homes and ask people to say a few words uh, in response to winning. So just a note here for all our winners. Um, yes, we'd like you to say a few words up to about 20 seconds, but please avoid doing a Gwyneth Paltrow if you can. If you're not sure what I mean, we'll put a link on Facebook now, a famous speech where there are copious shout outs to her second cousins and an implausible number of um, emotional breakdowns, I suppose. So if this happens to you, you might get cut off, which would be really embarrassing. So 20 seconds if you win. All the highly commended entrants will get certificates sent out to them when we return to campus, and winners will get one of these specially disinfected Making a Difference Award trophies. We'll be having a five-minute comfort break around 7 o'clock, so you can make yourselves a cuppa or pour yourself another glass of something. I'll be um, charging my glass of water here in my nice pink glass. Then we plan to finish the main event around 7.30 p.m., and we've got a quick after-show conversation then with Lem, uh, we'll finish with this Q&A in time for the National Clap for Key Workers, which I know many of you are doing at 8 o'clock tonight uh, on Thursdays each week on your streets. I know I'm going to be doing that, so we'll definitely finish for 8 o'clock. So let's get this started. Are you ready, Lem? Thing. Say it again, Lem. Sorry, I'll be good. I'm ready. Julian. I'm ready. Let's do good. this. Let's do, let's do this thing. So our first award then is for Outstanding Benefit to Society Through Research. This award recognizes innovation and success in how collaborative working, effective partnerships and knowledge exchange activities enable our research to achieve positive impacts on society. Tonight, there's an additional category within this award for projects that show emerging impact. So let's start with this category. So the first highly commended award for outstanding benefit to society through research with emerging impact goes to a researcher working in soil science who has developed practical tools to help some of the world's least advantaged farmers in Malawi in Africa. Congratulations go to Helena Herman for being highly commended for this work. Well done for your important work in this area, Helena. That's fantastic. Next then, our second highly commended award for outstanding benefit to society through emerging impact. This goes to a research project that involves training local people within rainforest communities in Panama as co-researchers to fully involve them in the scientific data collection and conservation work. This highly commended award goes to Andrew Gray and Amanda Bamford. Well done, Andrew, and well done, Amanda. That's fantastic. So our first winning award, over to you, Lem, to announce this. How exciting. Thank you, Julian. 
Okay, the outstanding benefit to society through emerging impact goes to a research project that's engaged farmers in Southeast Asia in bioenergy. It encourages them to generate energy using their agricultural waste. The researchers have worked in partnership with key organizations and local farmers to create viable and sustainable energy projects. Farmers have started generating energy using rice straw in the Philippines and Vietnam and rice husks in Myanmar. The winners are Angela Minas and Sarah Manda. Energy from Agricultural Waste in Southeast Asia covers two projects aiming to engage farmers in bioenergy development and link energy access to agricultural livelihoods. Angela and Sarah work with local communities and other stakeholders in the Philippines, Vietnam and Myanmar. They develop a social innovation strategy for implementing bioenergy projects that has contributed to find solutions to energy access and environmental problems in these countries, bringing benefits to rural development. Congratulations, Angela and Sarah, for your amazing research and for being part of Making a Difference Awards. A well-deserved recognition. Many congratulations and good evening, Angela. This sounds like an amazing project. Would you like to say a few words about winning this? Thank you, Lem. Uh, it is good to be recognized. We are honored. Uh, but our thanks actually go to our partners and collaborators in the Philippines, Vietnam, and Myanmar, and especially to the farmers who have been uh, very welcoming and sharing their stories so that we may reflect on how to co-develop solutions with them. Thank you, Angela. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. As a winner. Okay, and the winner of the main outstanding benefit to society through impact goes to research that's helping to significantly reduce mortality rates in children with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. The initial research helped increase survival rates among children with leukemia in the UK. But for the past five years, the winner has split his time between Manchester and the Tata Medical Center in Kolkata in India. Here in the UK, he's also now improving standards of care to significantly reduce mortality rates in children being treated for cancer. The Making a Difference Award for Research Impact goes to Vazka Sahar. Acute lymphoblastic leukemia, or all, is the most common type of childhood cancer globally. Um, and research being led by Professor Vasco Saha has seen survival rates from the disease increase from 60 to 90% in the West. The impact of this work has been incredible. Initially, the Tartar Medical Centre was the only tertiary cancer hospital in East India, which is comparable to um, having one cancer centre in Europe. But today, thanks to the work of Vasco and his colleagues, um, in five years, he's created a national hub of cancer centres and links up five major paediatric cancer centres. Congratulations, Vaskar. I consider myself really, really fortunate to have had the opportunity to come and visit you and your colleagues and meet the children and their families um, and just see the incredible work and the life-changing impact it's having on them. And I'm just so pleased because everybody else can see it now. Congratulations. Unfortunately, Kaz Vazka cannot join us this evening. Kate Tidman has kindly agreed to uh, collect the award on Vazka's behalf. Um, hi, uh, Kate, from Bohemian Shorten Cum Hardy. Uh, would, would you mind saying a few things about Vazka's work? Sure. In sunny Bohemian Shorten Cum Hardy, 
I'd just like to say thank you on behalf of Bhaskar, who can't be with us, obviously, because of his clinical commitments. But I know he'll be absolutely delighted with this award, which recognises not just his, but um, the efforts of his teams here and in India. So thank you very much. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. OK, thank you as well, Kate Tidman. That's our first award done. A few um, gizmos for us to get used to me and them, but I think we're sort of getting there. It will be a little bit ropey. That's part of the charm, hopefully, as you'll see. So we're now going to go on to our second award category for the evening. And this is for Outstanding Contribution to Equality, Diversity and Inclusion. These awards recognise commitment to equality, diversity and inclusion across the university. So the first highly commended award in this category goes to colleagues in the university's Disabled Staff Network and the Equality, Diversity and Inclusion team mm -hmm. for leading on a hugely successful national conference held in Manchester last year. Congratulations go to Hamid Haroon, Kirsty Hutchinson, Paul Marks-Jones, Veronique Rizzuto, Kira Wright, Sarah Fernandez and Suzanne Verstappen. Well done to all of you. And a second highly commended award for EDI. This goes to a project that looked at our Whitworth Art Gallery's collection and rediscovered and reinterpreted LGBTQ plus connections with the artworks. The highly commended award goes out to everyone in the Queer in the Whitworth team. So well done to all of you, fantastic achievement. Lem, then over to you to announce the winner, please. Okay, the winner of the Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Award goes to a project that addressed our postdoctoral staff, many of whom were feeling under-recognised and isolated. A cross-faculty group organised the university's first ever participation in International Postdoc Appreciation Week. Following a launch, researchers were invited to local events to meet and get to know each other. And the event raised awareness and celebrated the vital contribution of the university's diverse research community. The winners are Ines Hahn and her colleagues, who organised the International Postdoc Appreciation Week. The university's postdoctoral researchers make a significant contribution to our research, teaching and social responsibility goals, but their work often goes unrecognised and they can feel quite invisible. A group of postdocs initiated and organised Postdoc Appreciation Week. Over 600 postdocs took part in the celebration launch and local events. Over 2,000 thank you cards were distributed and a social media campaign showcased the diverse backgrounds of our exceptional researchers. This initiative has highlighted the vital role that postdocs play. Many congratulations to Innes Han and her organising team. Your recognition is very well deserved. When Jack could just, uh... <laughs> well done, Ines. Um, would you like to share a few words? Yes. Yes, thank you. I, I want to say a huge thank you to the wonderful team I represented at Organized Appreciation Week, to Research uh, Strategy Group, and um, everyone that organized local events from Sackville Street to uh, Alderley Park, and then in particular postdocs and research staff themselves, who are ev heavily affected currently by the situation, but are actually the driving force behind so many things. Thank I you, you rock. Thank you. The Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Award panel uh, wanted to make an additional award for special achievement. Uh, this goes to the team who established the Diversity and Inclusion Student Programme. The programme is a collaboration between the university and the Students' Union and it aims to improve outcomes for black and Asian and, and minority ethnic students. Students are employed to work on increasing students' sense of belonging. They do this by creating safe spaces to have conversations, empowering people to tackle discriminations. So congratulations go to Kath Prescott and all the students involved in the programme.
Welcome, Kath from the EDI team and Neelam, one of the students involved in the programme. Kath, would you like to share a few words with us? Oh, I am loving that light effect behind you, by the way. <laughs> Kath, would you like to share a few words with us? Welcome, Kath from the EDI team and Neelam, one of the students involved in the programme. Kath, would you like to share a few words with us? Yeah, um, I'd just like to say thank you. Um, and oh, I am loving that light effect behind you, by the way. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> um, I just want to say thank you. And Kath, um, would you like to share a few words with us? Welcome, Kath from the EDI team and Neelam, one of the students involved in the programme. Kath. OK, we seem to have a bit of a problem with Kath. So what I'm going to do is suggest um, that we try to move to Neelam while um, Kath repeats things on a little bit of feedback there so sorry about that Kath but we did try um you looked really good which just we couldn't hear you so never mind so we will try and go to Neelam who is the student who worked on the project Neelam are you able to say something to Lam and I about winning hi uh, yeah uh can you hear me yes we can yeah um, I just wanted to say a big thank you to the student ambassadors that were involved in the project, Idris, Shanaz, Safia, Iman, Raska and Khalifa. Uh, they were the students that are at the heart of the project that have pushed this forward and work really closely with the academics to close the attainment gap. So um, it's really been down to them to work in all the faculties and professional services to make this happen. So, yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Neelam. And sorry again, Kath, but um, we, we did enjoy seeing the beautiful Manchester sunshine through your window nonetheless. So our next award for this evening is for Outstanding Contribution to Widening Participation. As the university's first ever head of this uh, area of the university, this is really a category that's close to my own heart, and it recognises outstanding contributions to activities to create fairer access to higher education for people from families, just like my own was really, where there's no parental experience of higher education. So this evening there's two categories here. There's one for students and one for staff and we're going to announce the student winners first. So the first highly commended award goes to Medics in Primary Schools. This is an initiative that aims to inspire primary school students from families where there's no history of university by teaching weekly interactive se sessions in schools. This award goes to Sylvia Osahan. So Sylvia, that's a fantastic achievement. We're all really proud of the work you're doing, well done. The second highly commended student award goes to another project from our School of Medicine. This, this one's called the Manchester Outreach Medics, and it's an outreach project that provides insight into life at medical school for 16 to 18 year olds who are from families with no experience of university. So congratulations here go to Matthew Maiden. So Matthew, congratulations. That's another fantastic achievement for the School of Medicine, wow. So, Lem, over to you to announce the student winner, please. The winner of the Outstanding Contribution Widening Participation Award for Students is a group of black pharmacy students. They've worked together to improve access to university for prospective black uh, pharmacists, enhancing soft skills, providing admissions tips and offering career advice and guidance. The winner is the Black Pharmacists Collective. I'm really pleased that the Black Pharmacists Collective have been nominated for the Make a Difference Award. The group are seeking to address differential attainment issues in students from a black background in their future pharmacy careers. The way the group are seeking to address this is by inviting inspirational role models to meet with our students both face to face and virtually at In Focus events. Now I know that these events have been really, really well received by our students and I hope that there's going to be many more to come. We're so proud of the group of students for really using their initiative and developing this student-led intervention really into these issues. So I just really want to congratulate uh, the group on behalf of Pharmacy and say a big well done.
collecting the award this evening is Regina Agada. Really well done, Regina, and what a great project. Would you like to say a few words? Yeah, I just want to say I'm incredibly proud of our team for all the work that we've done this year. Um, I want to thank particularly the pharmacy school, um, namely Vicky, David and Jenny for all the encouragement and support. Um, we really appreciate it. Great. Congratulations to all our students. So we're now going to move on to the staff category. And the first highly commended staff award here goes to the Faculty of Biology, Medicine and Health's Work Experience Week for year 10 students from less advantaged backgrounds. This initiative really opens up doors to people who don't have personal family connections to people working in biology, health or medicine. So huge congratulations go out to Natalie Little, Kath Hinchliffe, Kerry Harrop and Charlotte Alcock. Thank you for this work, all of you. That's a great achievement. The second highly commended award in widening participation goes to a project that makes particle accelerator research accessible to blind and visually impaired children and adults. This highly commended award goes to Robert Appleby and the Tactile Collider team. To Robert and the team, many congratulations on this success. Lem then, can you announce the overall staff winner, please? Yes, I can, Julian. Yes, I can. Um, okay, the staff winner of the Widening Participation Award goes to Inside Out. This is an initiative that has empowered children to be great science communicators. 150 primary children examined the science in Manchester uh, museums, collections and animal husbandry. They created films about their findings which were uh, then showcased to over 3,000 people at university and school events. The winners are this outstanding, the winners of this outstanding contribution to widening participation are Amy McDowell, Louis, Louise uh, Bowfield and Lynn Bianke. Through a unique partnership between the museum and the university's science and engineering education research and innovation hub, Inside Out aimed to widen access to Manchester Museum's collections for primary schools during its park closure and to build pupil and teacher confidence in working scientifically through real life on campus experiences. Through direct film launches, we connected directly with around 950 pupils and 300 family members, all gained further understanding of scientific methods and careers in that area. To date, the films have been viewed by over 1,100 people. So congratulations to Amy and everybody else who was involved in the project. Congratulations, Amy and Sylvie. Uh, do you want to share some words with us? Just say thank you very much um, for the award. Much appreciated. Sylvie says thanks as well. Um, big thanks to Lynn uh, in FSE for her encouragement for the project um, and to Louise and all the other teachers and all my colleagues at the museum. Lots of people make the, made the project possible. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Amy and baby Sylvie. First time on the... Uh... On a, on, a, on a university screen. So tonight there is one more award in this category. Uh, it's for exceptional contribution to widening participation. Uh, it goes to someone who has been instrumental in reviving and championing the education program at Jodrell Bank Discovery Centre. Uh, this exceptional contribution award goes to Julia Riley. So we don't have um, Julia Riley here tonight, unfortunately. Yeah. So congratulations go to everybody in that category on widening participation. Our fourth award this evening then is the first highly commended award for teaching innovation and social responsibility is for an innovative student-led massive open online course entitled Parasitic Worms Life Stories. It was inspired by an unmet need of educating people about how they get infected with parasitic worms 
and it uses a student-led development design and delivery model. I hope nobody's eating at home for this award. And it goes to Catherine Else and the Parasitic Worms MOOC team. So well done, Catherine. The second highly commended award for teaching innovation in social responsibility goes to a project that's working with clinicians, external partners and patient groups um, and to improve awareness and diseases such as diabetes. And this award goes to Karen Cosgrove. Well done, Karen. So Lem, can you announce the overall winner now in this category, please? The winner of the Teaching Innovation Award in Social Responsibility goes to an, in an initiative that involves undergraduate students delivering health education within the high schools. Um, since 2017, the program has reached 3,000 pu pupils across 14 Manchester schools. All the pupils have received assessed uh, workshops on public health topics and, and students have applied their learning in a real world context. The winners are David Allison, Emma Williams, Sarah Willis and Rebecca Rafferty. This is a project about delivering really important health education messages to high school pupils. Uh, as a group, they're often very difficult to reach, as they're often not receptive to receiving messages on maintaining good health delivered by adults such as parents or teachers. In this project, students were used who were much closer in age to the high school pupils. Uh, they delivered messages on topics such as mental health, alcohol, drugs, sex and antibiotics. The project was tremendous benefit to the students also as it gave them an opportunity to get teaching experience and an opportunity to practice delivering health promotion in preparation for their future professional careers. I'd like to give my congratulations to David, Emma, Sarah and Rebecca. Very well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Picking up the award is David Allison. David, this is your opportunity to say a few words. Thank, thank you very much, Lem, and thank you to all the organisers. Um, can I just start off by saying it's obviously an honour and a privilege to accept this award, uh, and quite humbling, really, given the quality of the other nominations. So I raise my half-empty glass uh, to, to everybody. In my remaining 12 seconds or so, I'd like to say a very quick thank you to the team, to uh, Emma, Rebecca and, and Sarah for their support uh, and inspiration, to, to my wife and daughter for their patience in listening to me, to the schools that have been involved with this project. Uh, without them, we wouldn't have um, succeeded. Um, some of the teachers have been fantastic. And a, a special hello Nicola, if you're watching, which I think you are, for all your outstanding work at Loretto High. And finally, to our marvellous undergraduate students. And I know this is a core curriculum activity, but they have been outstanding ambassadors for not just pharmacy, but also for the university. They are what have made a difference to this project. So thank you all. Thank you very much, David. Really nice speech. And we're really pleased for you to win this award. It's a really inspirational project. So the next awards are for outstanding public and community engagement. And we recognize examples here where the university is engaging with the public to share knowledge and enrich lives. Uh, this has received the most uh, entrance of all of our different categories tonight. And there's four different categories, some with students and some with staff winners. Uh, in this category, we're looking now at outstanding public contributions and outstanding local engagement. So let's do local um, public contribution, sorry, first of all. And um, this first award recognizes the contribution of public partners. Uh, this is where we're working in partnership with communities locally, nationally and internationally uh, with, with colleagues here in Manchester. So I'm really pleased to announce the first highly commended award for outstanding public contribution, which goes to a team for their science art project, bringing together Manchester-based clinicians, research scientists and artists with a common interest in diabetes. This award goes to the 7,000 feet team. 
Well done, everybody there. The second highly commended award goes to the International Arts and Homelessness Summit and Festival. Uh, this is a, 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 an initiative that brought together artists who have been uh, homeless themselves with professionals. And in, for this award, I want to say congratulations to Matt Peacock. Matt, it's been great to work with you on this. Well done. Lem, over to you for the winner, please. Okay. The winner of the Outstanding Public Contribution Award this year is for Peterloo 2019. The Peterloo 2019 programme of special events was led and delivered by Manchester Histories, a sister charity of the university and incubated out of our Department of History. Amazingly, this bicentenary brought together over 46 different cultural organisations with 50 community groups and over 600,000 people engaged in, in its programme. The winners are Karen Shannon, Janine Haig and Charlie Booth. Manchester Histories led Peterloo 2019 to commemorate the 200th anniversary of the Peterloo Massacre. Under Karen Steer, the Peterloo 2019 connected people from all around the world and literally thousands more people now understand what caused Peterloo and the impact it's had on contemporary society today. It was over 180 events that took place across Greater Manchester and culminated in a large scale event called from the crowd. We focused on themes of protest, democracy and freedom of speech, which meant that we could look at how our lives are today and we could connect families with their own history and with the history of their own communities. Congratulations, Karen, on behalf of the whole team. We're really proud of you and you've done an amazing job and really deserve all this recognition. from Old Trafford in Manchester. Karen, congratulations for such a brilliant programme of events. Would you like to share a few words? From Old Trafford in Manchester. Mm -hmm. Karen, congratulations for Thank such you. a brilliant programme of events. Would you like to share a few words? I would. Thank you, everyone. And thanks to Manchester History's team. And also I'd like to mention um, Naomi and John and Max. Um, can you hear me OK? Um, I'd like to thank our ambassadors and our amazing partners. Thank you, everyone. And thanks to Manchester History. Karen, if you turn off your um, Facebook, you'll be you'll be fine. I think we've got the thanks there from Karen. Just to say, Karen, um, we could hear that and um, you, you made some thanks to your partners and we're really pleased um, that you've got this award. So well done for the Peterloo 2019 award. Fantastic achievement. So the second public and community engagement award tonight is for outstanding local engagement. It recognises contributions made to our local communities across Greater Manchester. We've got staff and student winners. And I wanted, first of all, to recognise a highly commended student award for local engagement. This goes out to the Once a Month project, which aims to combat, combat period poverty by distributing sanitary packages to homeless women around the city centre. In this award, then, I'd like to say the highly commended winners are Bethany Veal, Cherry Ann Beagles, Megan Swift, and Isabel Duffield. Well done, all of you. The next highly commended student award goes to Manchester First Language Community Project which is a new way of engaging students with local communities where our dental students are providing accessible oral health education in local communities. This award goes to Sophie Pathanathan, Dia Thakra, Miriam Rennie, Olivia Morrison, and Karina Mukhtar. Well done to all of you. It's a super project, this one. And the final highly commended award for local engagement is for an outreach project based on research into intentional HIV infection amongst gay men. This project has had a direct impact, impact on policies to combat HIV infection and also how services are delivered. This project really helps to change lives and it goes to Jamie Garcia Iglesias. Jamie, well done. 
Fantastic. So, Lam, please reveal the winner for us in this category. Okay, so the winners of the Outstanding Local Engagement by Students goes to organisers of the Refugee and Asylum Seekers Conversational Club. Huge congratulations go to the two Alices, Alice Lavery and Alice Barkley. For refugees and asylum seekers in the UK, conversational English skills are vital for accessing services and integrating with the local community, but access to English courses is severely limited. The Refugee and Asylum Seeker Conversation Club works with organisations across Manchester to host five conversation clubs each week. These provide a safe space for members to practice their spoken English skills through friendly, informal conversation. The conversation clubs help members to practice their spoken English, build confidence and create a sense of community, tackling social isolation amongst refugees and asylum seekers. Congratulations to the Refugee and Asylum Seeker Conversation Club. We're so proud of everything that you've achieved this year and this is really well deserved. Alice. Uh, congratulations. What would you like to say to us on winning this? Well, thank you for recognising our club. We've been really lucky this year to have such a dedicated team of volunteers and some amazing partner organisations, as well as Jenny and Elizabeth in the SU. We've made it all really easy and fun to work with them. So thank you to all of them for their hard work. Really. Great stuff, Alice and Alice. Uh, we're really proud of the work you've done. So. Now for the Staff Awards for Outstanding Local Public and Community Engagement. There's three highly commended and one winner in this category. And the first highly commended award goes to Nick Weiss for a project that engaged 400 people with science and engineering. Well done, Nick. The second highly commended Staff Award goes to Aging in Place, which supports people to age well within their local communities. This award goes to Chris Philipson, Maura Goff and Patty Doran. Well done to all of you. This is a great project. I really like this one. And the last highly commended staff award goes to Coming In From The Cold. This aims to increase the volume and the visibility of archives related to Greater Manchester's Black, Asian and minority ethnic communities. Well done on this. Community uh, commended award then goes to Jennifer Vickers, Drew Ellery, Leila Beneda, Joanna Robinson, uh, well done for all of this work. It's made a massive difference to huge parts of our population across Greater Manchester. So Lem, now please can you announce the winner? The winner of the Outstanding Local Engagement Award for Staff goes to Beyond Faith. This was a groundbreaking co-curated exhibition and events programme at our university's art gallery, The Whitworth. Um, it, it presented the work of five contemporary Muslim women artists with pieces from its collection. It challenged exclusion in art spaces. The winners are Saskia Warren and all the team at the Whitworth. Beyond Faith was a really important moment in the gallery's calendar during 2019 and it brought together the work of five practicing female Muslim artists. Often underrepresented in gallery collections and museum spaces, the artists had a chance to tell a story that was personal to them, alongside works from the Whitworth collection and their own portfolios. They explored themes that were personal to themselves, including faith, belonging, otherness and togetherness. It was really important to showcase their journey as artists, but actually reach out to the communities on a doorstep that perhaps normally wouldn't visit the gallery. It really helped the gallery to diversify its reach, and this project has been a huge success for that. So well done Saskia for bringing those ideas together, well done the team at the Whitworth, well done all of the artists involved to bring art, ideas and uh, people together. what an amazing project. Would you like to share a few words with us? 
Oh, I'm absolutely delighted to have won this award. It was unexpected. What I want to say is really, I'm accepting this award on behalf of the wonderful artists we worked with and the co-curators. So that's Shabana Bay, Fatima Fagasan, Ushre Go, Rabina Akta Alla, Ada Foratan, and many thanks also to my really fabulous research assistant, Jana Wendler, um, the curators at the Whitworth, Ufra Rajkapal and Andrew Vaughan. This was definitely a team effort. I'm truly delighted. Thank you. Well done, Saskia, and everybody you've mentioned there at the Whitworth. So our next award of the evening is for Outstanding Contribution to Social Innovation, innovation and Environmental Impact Through Enterprise. We've got um, a highly commended award here, and the first one is, uh, has been addressing a huge challenge that we all have around the world, and it goes to a student-led, not-for-profit enterprise making zero-waste living affordable and accessible to all. This award goes to the Want Not Waste team. Well done indeed. We have a second highly commended award, and this goes to Electric Bazaar, an ethical fashion social enterprise based in our Want Not Waste shop in our students' union. So this award goes to Alicia Mamo, Shamima Connett, and Sarah Shari. Well done to all three of you. Lem, can you announce the winner, please? Thank you, Julian. Okay, the winner of the Social Innovation Award goes to Wellspring. Wellspring is a free app which bridges the gap between those with mental illness and the treatment that they need. The winner from our School of Mathematics is Elliot McKernan. Often, people with mental health problems find it hard to identify and access the support that's available to them. Drawing on the expertise of medical health professionals, Elliot McKernan has conceived and developed Wellspring, an app that helps the user identify their needs, directs them to the relevant resources and tells them what to expect. Wellspring will help vulnerable people make the difficult step of reaching out for support. Congratulations, Elliot, on your wonderful achievement of all the imagination and determination it's taken. Elliot, hi. Would you like to say a few words? Sure, yeah. Uh, thanks. It's a, a real honour. Um, I'd like to thank my whole team. It was a, a joint effort. Uh, mental health is really important to us. And it's great to get recognition for an important problem. And I'm happy to say the app will be launching in a few weeks. So thank you very much. Congratulations uh, to all of our social entrepreneurs in that category. And our last award before our short break goes to social responsibility, innovation and impact in the university's professional services. So within professional services, the first highly commended award goes to PS staff who have helped deliver our acclaimed Justice Hub network of activities. This includes support for our Free Legal Advice Centre, our Dementia Law Clinic, our Miscarriages of Justice Review Centre, and our Legal Technology Initiative. Congratulations for this award go to Sue Gordon, Monica Danielska, and Kian Hickey. Well done. The second highly commended award in professional services is for the Greater Manchester Engineering Challenge. Congratulations on this award go to a veteran of these awards, Lynn Bianchi. Well done, Lynn. Okay, now over to Lem to announce the overall winner in this category. The winner of the Professional Services Award goes to Building Better Futures. It's a unique construction framework led by the university. It's been established to deliver capital projects supporting the university's £1 billion 10-year campus master plan. The framework is led by professional services staff in partnerships. Uh, it's brought hundreds of job op opportunities for local people. The winners are Paul Maccabee and the Construction Partnering Social Responsibility Group.
When we started planning the delivery of our capital program back in 2012, I wanted to maximise the impact of the university £1 billion spend on our local communities. Our team set ambitious targets for job creation, apprentices, outreach programmes and environmental sustainability. It also established a community fund to help small community projects. But behind the numbers there are some amazing stories of how people's lives have been transformed. From helping a homeless person and rehabilitated offender to find jobs on our construction sites, to the physical spaces that have been transformed at the Women's Direct Action Centre, the Proud Trust and the Works. So many congratulations to the team for being nominated. Thank you for all your work on this initiative and good luck. Okay, unfortunately, Paul can't be with us tonight, but we all know how proud he would be to get this award. Um, we also, we've tried to get an alternative person in the team to speak, but we were having a few technical issues, so we won't be able to do that. But Sam Johnson from um, the Director of Estates was there, and it was this project was a real uh, team effort for people across different parts of professional services, led by the Director of Estates. So congratulations to everyone. I'd now like to put on record some other awards that were made earlier today, and these are our Volunteer of the Year awards. You'll see on the slides that we made a Volunteer of the Year award to Joanna Melville, Melville in Alumni Volunteer of the Year. We also made an award to Shanta Coles, who won Staff Volunteer of the Year. We made one to Holly Smith, who was awarded Student Volunteer of the Year. And finally, Student Angels won the Student Group Volunteer of the Year. More information about these can be found on the university's website. So congratulations to everybody that picked up a Volunteer of the Year Award, which was an event that happened on Facebook earlier on today. So each year at these awards, we do a short showcase of a major milestone within the university. And whilst we didn't want these awards to be completely overshadowed by the ongoing pandemic, it'd really be impossible to proceed with these without acknowledging, I guess, the real and current ways in which the university staff uh, our students and our alumni are leading the fight against coronavirus. During all these crises, wherever they are in the world, you often see the best coming out in people, an amazing sense of belonging and commonality, both professionally and perhaps in our wider personal lives as well. All of this has been evident across our university community since the extraordinary events brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. And we wanted to share a short film with you where we've captured some of the many ways our university has been responding. The impact of COVID-19 has spread around the world, affecting all of our lives in so many ways. At the University of Manchester, our people are at the heart of finding solutions to the major challenges this disease presents. We have a long history of collaborating with our local community and contributing to the national and global effort in times of crisis. It's part of who we are. In that same spirit of humanity, our staff students and alumni have stepped up to respond to the biggest global challenge the world has faced for decades. Our links with the NHS, trusts and civic partners enable us to deliver real value where it's needed most, whether through mobilising volunteers, providing essential equipment or conducting crucial scientific research. Research has a significant role to play in understanding more about this new disease, how to tackle it and the longer term impact this pandemic will have on communities. In an unprecedented move, scientists and clinicians across Greater Manchester formed a rapid response research group to find ways to beat COVID-19 and save lives. The group harnesses the power of hundreds of researchers from the university, as well as clinical colleagues at Manchester University NHS Foundation Trust and the Northern Care Alliance NHS Group. This work is backed by Health Innovation Manchester. The recommendations from our research will help deliver social and health benefits and it's been used to inform the UK government. Our experts are also looking at ways to recover the economy as we come out of the other side of the pandemic. We've also been supporting our staff and students to volunteer. We're helping vulnerable and isolated people, delivering food, supporting the NHS and filling local skills gaps. 
While our doors are temporarily closed to the public, we still remain very much open online. We're offering resources that cover everything from practical advice for life under lockdown to ways to access the magic of Manchester Museum, Chodwell Bank and the Whitworth Art Gallery from home. Through our research, volunteering and support, our university values come to the fore. Social responsibility is one of our three core strategic goals, sitting equally alongside our commitments to world-class research and outstanding learning and students' experience. The priority we place on social responsibility makes us unique among British universities. Social impact is at the heart of our mission as our experts continue to work tirelessly to solve the biggest global challenge in decades. To learn more or to find out how you can support our work, visit our website. We're now going to take a five minute break. I hope you're inspired by that short film. If you want to see that, you can find that on YouTube, uh, the university's YouTube channel. So make yourself a cuppa now, pour yourself something stronger, and we'll be back for a very short second half where we've got three more awards before we finish for the night around 7.35. Thanks very much, enjoy the break. Okay, welcome back everyone. I hope you've had a refreshing time, whatever you're drinking. Um, I hope you've had a chance to refresh that. It won't be long before I can join you because we've got just three awards left now. I've got my can of beer ready to drink. I'm gonna keep it closed though. So well done to everyone who spotted some of the subtle differences in the appearance of Lem and I so far. There are a few more to come, so pay close attention. We're running sort of to time, so we definitely were a few minutes over, but we will have time for a Q&A with Lem at the end. So post any questions you want to put to Lem, and I'll try and ask those questions of him straight after the awards. We've got a Q&A after show. So back to the awards. The first award in this short second half is for Outstanding Contribution to Environmental Sustainability. In this important award, we've got both student and staff winners for environmental sustainability. So let's start with the student category. There's one highly commended award, and that goes to the Olio Food Distribution Initiative. This involves student volunteers collecting and distributing leftover food from within the university and sharing this with local communities using a pioneering smartphone app. The award's been picked up by a PhD student, Matteo Augustin. Matteo has been something of a food waste hero since coming to Manchester in 2016, and I know he's been really busy during the current pandemic. Merci et bravo, Matteo, and welcome back. Um, also, I hope you're able to recharge your various levels. So now what I'd like you to do is let me pass over to Lem to announce the overall winner. Thanks, Julian. Okay, the student winner of the Outstanding Environmental Sustainability Award goes to an amazing project that aims to make zero waste living affordable and accessible to all. This non-for-profit shop and social enterprise set up by students is based on our campus. The winner is, of course, the Want Not Waste team. Waste Zero Waste Shop was set up to address the problem of single-use plastics both on campus and into the wider city of Manchester. It was started by a bunch of students in December 2018 who wanted to offer an easy and local solution to the global plastic crisis, both in educating people on this issue and in offering a place for students, staff, academics, as well as the wider public to buy their essential goods in a plastic-free and guilt-free way. So since then, the project has blossomed into a fully functioning shop that provides goods for everyone, showcasing some amazing student enterprises and talent, and it puts on events, workshops and talks, educating people on sustainability and climate justice. So I just want to say a huge congratulations to every single volunteer who has made this project what it is today.
Hi, Holly. Congratulations. Would you like to share a few words? Hi, yeah. Um, thank you so much for this award and to my amazing team of volunteers. We've got last year we had about eight people on the team and now we have 30 passionate students and it just like it honestly wouldn't be possible with them without them <laughs> um, I look forward to building our community further next year and broadening beyond zero waste um, shopping and just looking at the bigger picture of sustainability so thank you very much thank you what a great inspiring project by, by our students Right, now to the staff category for environmental sustainability, and I'm delighted to announce the winners. The first staff winner for outstanding contribution to environmental sustainability is given for new and emerging projects. The winners have developed an approach to reduce single-use plastics in biology laboratory classes. Uh, this has already generated a reduction of more than 26,000 plastic items per year. Uh, congratulations to Maggie Fossier, Ruth Grady and the Sustainability in Undergraduate Labs team. University of Manchester has pledged to eliminate all avoidable single-use plastics on campus by 2022. As you can imagine, this is a really big challenge and we all need to do our bit. In fact, we all need to do a lot. Maggie and Ruth have already decided to take on this challenge and they've, what they've done is looked at the first year practicals that are run in the School of Biological Sciences. As a result of their efforts, nearly 40,000 pieces of plastic have been saved by their project. I understand that this initiative is going to be rolled out across the Faculty of Biology, Medicine and Health. So well done and thank you so much for all your efforts, Ruth and Maggie. And congratulations for doing your bit. Hi Maggie and well done. Would you like to share a few words with us? Yes, thank you so much for this award. This is such a, a, a honor. Uh, it's a huge team we have to thank. There's about 30 people who actually helped, uh, academy, technical staff, undergraduate students and postgraduate students. We've only scratched the surface. We already had 37,000 pieces a year, but we only started and we want to go really big and we now want to go to research labs too. So thank you for the award. It's gonna really help us pushes further thank you thank you maggie okay the second staff winner for outstanding contribution to environmental sustainability is given for established contributions to environmental sustainability the winners have invested instigated a dedicated program of pioneering sustainability the winners are Teresa anderson and tim o'brien We all know that music festivals are the cornerstone of British culture each summer, but many of them create really unsustainable impacts on the environment. Blue Dots really stood out there because since its inception, it's thought about environmental sustainability in two main ways, really. Firstly, it's really thought about it in terms of its operations. So it was the first festival to have all LED lighting, uh, introduce car sharing schemes, have things like a zero waste to landfill policy, no single use plastics. Blue Dot, I think, has been really pioneering in thinking about the fragility of our earth. Really through its pioneering way, it's thought about the, the different acts it's put together, the performances, the types of activities that engage the attendees at the festival. So this award for environmental sustainability is really well deserved and I'd like to raise a glass of organic red wine here to say thank you and well done to Teresa, to Tim, to all of the team who put on the Blue Dot Festival. Well done everyone.
a sustainable festival. This is great. Teresa, Tim, you're both there. You uh, you are obviously not socially distancing. <laughs> <laughs> we're Have not. You words to say? <laughs> yeah, we're not socially distancing. We're married to each other. So that's <laughs> you did try to persuade me to move out, though, but I said I wasn't doing it. So, <laughs> so we're delighted to accept this award on behalf of the whole Blue Dot team. Obviously, we're representing a huge number of people. We're all deeply committed to saving the planet, to talking about different ways of working with each other and celebrating the creativity and research of the whole university. So thanks very much. Thank you. Congratulations to all our winners in this category. So we're now on to the last two awards for the evening. We've got uh, Outstanding National and International Public Engagement and Outstanding Public Engagement by our cultural institutions. So first, national and international public engagement. We've got student and staff winners in this category. So we're gonna start with the student award. Lem, please can you announce the student winner in this category? So the student award for outstanding national and international public engagement goes to students of ours who've changed how mental health has been historically neglected in Zimbabwe and indeed in many other African nations. The award goes to Tara Zero, Fundira, and Natasha Goredema. In many African countries, ignorance, fear of stigma, and mistaken beliefs can make talking about mental health incredibly difficult. Tari Fundari, a student from the University of Manchester, decided to tackle this issue by launching the Create Zim I'm Fine social media challenge. He shared his own mental health experiences and nominated friends to do the same, with thousands of young Zimbabweans taking up and supporting the challenge. Create Zim has gone on to provide a program of safe spaces and an interactive online platform to raise awareness, reduce the taboos and foster conversations around mental health. Congratulations, this is a well-deserved award for a wonderful project. Wow, Tara Zero, um, what would you like to say in response to winning? Well, firstly, I'd like to say thank you so much for organising this and a really big thanks to my Create Sim team and also to my friends and family who've supported. And yeah, just a really big thanks to God who's given me the desire to want to support and love people. And I hope this helps people to, to do the same, not just in Zimbabwe, but everywhere in the world. Thank you. So well done to all our winners there. We're now going to move to the staff awards in this category. And there's one highly commended award for national and international impact in public engagement. And it goes to the team responsible for the hugely successful NHS at 70 project, which has been creating a national public archive of the history of our NHS by recording stories from patients, staff and the public across all of the UK of the profound impact at key moments in our lives and in our natural culture, national culture of the NHS. So well done to Stephanie Snow and the NHS at 70 team. You've captured in one place the definitive story of a, perhaps our most cherished British institution. Well done. Lem, please can I now ask you to announce the staff winner? Okay, the winner of the National and International Engagement Award goes to Manchester Participating in Panama. This project aims to empower local rainforest communities in the Santa Fe National Park in Panama. Our Manchester Museum Vivarium is the only place in the world to house the striking and endangered harlequin frog species outside of Panama. This project teamed Manchester people with local communities in Panama and trained people in skills to help monitor the frogs and their habitat and, and made them co-researchers co in the project. Um, it's a unique project providing environmental education in local Panama schools to raise awareness of biodiversity issues. The winners of the National and International Engagement Award are Andrew Gray and Amanda Bamford. I'd 
I'd like to briefly tell you about the Manchester participating in Panama project that Andrew Gray and Amanda Bamford have been shortlisted for. It was launched in 2019 and the project set out to increase awareness of biodiversity challenges in Panama and empower the local rainforest communities in conserving a critically endangered frog species, the harlequin frog, this guy. Uh, they've built collaborations between staff and students at Manchester with the University of Panama, local wildlife conservation charities and local communities and schools that train locals in research techniques and field skills and have received recognition from the Panamanian ambassador. So congratulations for being nominated, Andrew and Amanda, and thanks from us for raising the profile of the university, biodiversity and conservation, and most importantly, the frogs. Hepatology, herpetology. Herpetology, yeah. Study of reptiles and amphibians. So over to our curator of herpetology, Andrew Gray. Andrew, share with us a few words about winning this. Oh, I'm absolutely thrilled. And on behalf of the museum, I'd like to thank everybody. Um, we'd particularly like to thank the Vivarium staff and all the museum staff who really contribute to the engagement work that we do in the museum and the far reaching aspects of that work that, that go out to the world to Panama and to other places. It's really what we're about. And it's so proud, I'm so proud, and we're all so proud that we work at the museum to be part of the University of Manchester and to be able to contribute to the engagement work that, that's done internationally in this way. Um, this particular project is very, very close to my heart. And I'd like to thank Amanda Bamford in particular, who's been a, a fantastic sort of um, person to work with and supporter of this, this project and a lot of the work that we do with the live animals in the museum. Thank you very much, Andrew, and well done, Amanda, as well. Um, this has given me a few flashbacks, actually, to our very first Making a Difference Awards, when Andrew caused Bedlam by bringing his collection of frogs onto the stage, which reminds me, Lem, I want to ask you something. What do you call a woman with a frog on her head? I don't know, Julian. What do you call a woman with a frog on her head? <laughs> um, Lily. And do you know what type of music sophisticated frogs listen to? No, 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 I don't. Go on. Okay. You won't believe us. Hopper. And did you hear about the young frog whose grandmother was from Warsaw? I don't know whether I want to ask this question, but I didn't. Go on. He was a tadpole. I know it's late, Julian. Shall we, shall we move on, yeah? Okay, yeah, totally. Okay, last and by no means least, this last award recognises outstanding public and community engagement by our cultural institutions. We've got an amazing museum, gallery, public library and science centre, and each of these plays an important role for our university's interface with the public. In this category, there's one highly commended award and one winner. So first, the highly commended award goes to a team who've brought a new approach to designing research of the Whitworth collection to rediscover missing LGBTQ plus narratives. This award goes to the Queerin the Whitworth team. Well done, everybody who's involved in this. Len, can you please now announce the winner, which is our last one this evening? Whoa, we're there. So the winner of the Outstanding Contribution to Public Engagement Award from our cultural institutions is someone who co-curated an exhibition with the Partition Museum in India. This was the first Indo-UK museum partnership of its kind. Um, it increased awareness of this important and tragic historical event, that is the, the uh, hundreds of peaceful protesters uh, massacred in, in the Punjab by a British general in, in April 1919. Um, the winner is Kat Lum from the Manchester Museum.
In April 2019, on the centenary of the Jallianwala Bagh Massacre, Manchester Museum opened the groundbreaking exhibition Jallianwala Bagh 1919 Punjab Under Siege in partnership with the Partition Museum in Amritsar, India. For the first time in UK Indian history, two museums located in cities deeply affected by colonialism, Amritsar and Manchester, came together to re-examine the brutal massacre that eventually brought about the end of the British Empire. My colleague Catherine Lum expertly project managed the exhibition, which raised awareness of the peaceful protest and direct action, martial law, the divergent British and Indian inquiry findings, and the ongoing social, political and cultural response. Congratulations, Kat. You did an amazing job, one that had an enduring impact on colleagues and audiences alike. Kat, congratulations on this really innovative work. Would you like to say a few words? Uh, yes, thank you, Lem. Um, I have to say a massive thanks to the brilliant team at Manchester Museum, including the wonderful Stephen, who was just on that video. He was a great help to me. Uh, we had great support from Manchester institutions um, who loaned us objects for the exhibition. And obviously, I can't go without saying that um, massive congratulations as well to the Partition Museum, mm. um, especially my counterpart, Priyanka Shashadri and Lady Kishwa Desai, who is the uh, one of the trust founders. And thank you as well to the support and members of the Museum South Asia Gallery Collective and all the community that made it such a successful exhibition. We couldn't have done it without them. Thanks, Kat, and thanks, Lem. Well, that nearly concludes the evening. We've had a huge number of entries and everyone who's been recognised this evening should be really proud. The judges obviously had a, a really, really tough job. It's been unbelievably inspirational to me. So please join me and Lem for a moment in clapping from all corners of the world. We've got people tuned in in every nation. So let's put our hands together for all of the highly commended and the winners. Let's have a collective clap. Yeah. Okay, I'm now going to check with my trusted technical colleagues who've done an amazing job tonight, whether we have Edward Astley or not. Can you tell me if we do? By that pause, I'm presuming that we don't. Do we have Edward with us? Okay, I understand we had our first technical issue of the night there. Um, I think we've done pretty well to get you nearly towards the end. Um, so we were supposed to have Edward Assel, who's the chair of our university's board of governors with us. Um, Edward was joining us from the Lake District and these lockdown studios, I think we've done a lot of impressive things tonight, but it couldn't extend to getting a connection up to the Lake District, I think. So we'll have to give that a miss, but what we'll do, Edward will record some of his thoughts and we'll put that out on the Facebook page for everybody who's, who's attended tonight to see it because Edward as chair of our board really wanted to communicate the board of governors support for these. So before handing back to Lemon, I'd like to thank some people whose contribution have made tonight's event happen. So first of all, I'd like to thank Jeff Hudson, Andrew York, and all the colleagues from Media Services who've set up this amazing lockdown studio, which is a virtual creation. It's all done at social distance. Um, and we're all from different living rooms and different parts of Manchester. I think we've got Russia and we've got Erlen, we've got Didsbury, we've got Cholton, and we've got Salford. So it's been an amazing um, I think that they've put together really. I've been so impressed. I'd like also to thank Alistair Beach from Communications and Marketing for sorting out all of the social media tonight and all the Facebook work. And last but certainly by no means least, my own colleagues from the Office for Social Responsibility. So Isabel for doing all the Twitter work, Deanne for managing the waiting room, Suzanne for keeping us all to time and writing all of these words, amazing work. James Hopkins for being uh, James and being uh, really supportive all the way through this and standing in in so many ways. And last but not least, we've got Lisa Govey. Now, Lisa is the overall manager of the awards, and Lisa doesn't know this yet. She's going to be quite shocked. But um, Lisa, again, this is nothing illegal about this. She lives with Paul Govey, who's also a very good friend of mine and happens to be Lisa's mm -hmm. husband. I've arranged for Paul to pass over something to Lisa now. So we're going to hopefully move to Lisa, who's going to receive some flowers off us. Oh, here we go. <laughs> you can't Lisa. see them. There we go. Congratulations. <laughs> You've saved me a job, Julian and Lem. Thank you, flowers. <laughs> Thank you. No, I didn't expect that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Beautiful oh. flowers.
So that's just to say thank you, Lisa. We couldn't have done these without all of your work. You've worked tirelessly now. It takes about a year of preparation, this, but certainly the last uh, few weeks have been really, really busy. So well done, Lisa. Thanks a lot. So that's all from me tonight. Thank you for joining us from your own homes and congratulations to everyone who's been recognised this evening. You should all be really proud. Don't forget that you're welcome to join the after show drink and q and I'm having with Lem once this event finishes. We're going to have about 15 minutes, so definitely worth tuning in. There's a few questions we've got from Facebook to be put into Lem. Um, so again, thank you, Lem, really, as well. I haven't said thanks to you. Um, you've joined us this year again. Can I ask you to just say a few words by means of conclusion and also how we're going to end this evening? Yeah, I'd just like to add uh, my own thanks to everyone who's made tonight happen and take part. It's great to see a team in action. And that's basically what a, a, a social responsibility is all about. It is teams in action, Julian. And finally, I'd like to say thanks to you, Julian, because you've just you've just driven you the captain of the ship. And, uh, and, and it's just been great to, to work with you on this in this medium. Hey, we're going to end on a poem of mine, which was commissioned by you, Julian, uh, called Making a Difference. And um, remember, folks, uh, stay tuned uh, if you want to share a quick after show, just like Julian said. But for now, here's Making a Difference. And here's me saying thanks. And thanks to you, Julian. And thanks to the University of Manchester. And good night. We are shaking and breaking and waking indifference. We are quaking and taking and making a difference. We are working, observing, recording, researching. We're in, we're conferring, subverting, referring. We're counting the minutes, the moments, the loss, redressing the balance, addressing the cost. We are citing and fighting. It's all in the writing, the spark is igniting, in dark we are lightning, we're breaking the brackets. The fact is the planet's in rackets and rackets of rackets in brackets. The systems, the victims, the damning, the scamming, the biased predicting, the beating and banning. We teach through closed doors, when none listen we hear, when heads turn away. We volunteer to relentless censors, the damned and defenceless. Our words are the action, the louder reaction. We count the self in illness we name the unnamed we count the invisible we make change we work we stand tall we rise up to be counted we work above all we climb mountains the skills we exchange the breaking of chains the action sustained the makers of change we are shaking and breaking and Waking indifference, we are quaking and taking and making a difference.